Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and I'm still working on my bug-faced mask and I'm feeling kind of silly doing it at all because I know that there are very few people in the world who actually want one and here I am making videos, a whole series of videos and even worse, <laughs> the project is probably going to expand beyond what I'm doing now. So let me show you um, what he's looking like right this very minute then I'll show you how I got it to this point and uh, then I'll tell you why it's probably going to get bigger than this. I mean, just a second. This is what he looks like now. I did spend a few hours getting the basic shapes on there uh, without being able to see the bug very well because I couldn't find my magnifying glass. And once it was done, I was thinking, you know, that is so simple. It almost feels like, um, I don't know, maybe it would work as a... I don't know, maybe a helmet type of thing or something, but it just didn't look like a bug to me. Since I couldn't find my magnifying glass, I took some photographs, some real real close-up photographs uh, using my tripod and some better lighting and stuff than I had done before. Before I just uh, got pictures of the bug by kind of holding it up by hand in front of the lens. It didn't work. That was pretty bad. So I got some better ones and I was able to blow them up on my computer and uh, now I have quite a lot more details. Uh, enough so that he actually almost looks like he has a mouth. We've got the eyeballs there. And there's also some really interesting color patterns on there that I could not see just by the naked eye. And so I'm going to be able to um, uh, use my photographs to really turn this into a cool mask, I think. Now let me tell you why it's going to get bigger. The wings start quite a long way back. Now you can see it from the side and the wings would actually start back here. Uh, and then they would go back this way probably about two feet. If I just stick them on right here it's going to be weird. Could get away with it. But I would like to have them farther back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this in plaster cloth. Like I told you in the last video, I'm not using the fast setting paper mache uh, because I got some plaster cloth in the house and I need to use it up. So I'm going to use uh, plaster cloth instead. I'm going to cover this guy. I'm going to let it harden. And then I'm going to transfer it over to my mannequin <laughs> guy so that I can build the back of a, basically a helmet-shaped mask. And then I will have something at the back of the head to attach those wings to. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on the, um, the plaster cloth right now. Hopefully I have indented all of these spaces enough. It's not perfect, it's, obviously it's a little bit rough, but I think once I get the plaster cloth on there and then, then I can add more details uh, with either air gray clay or uh, maybe even some epoxy clay. I've got some of that in the house. So I can go ahead and, and finish it up really nice. I've got, it, I've got it enough now that I'm ready for that plaster cloth. So I'll go get myself some warm water. I'll almost squish my bug. <laughs> Just now, whoops. <laughs> you can be careful. Uh, <laughs> I'll go get my warm water and I'll tear off my strips of plaster cloth and um, I'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to stop there and I'm going to let this get hard. I put at least two layers on every single bit of it. Obviously I still lost a lot of the details even though I tried really hard to get all of those lines incised uh, as deeply as possible. Because if you're putting something over a dip, you're going to lose some of the dip. <laughs> it's just sort of obvious. But I'm going to get all those back when I put something on top of this. Like I said, I might be using the air dry clay recipe. 
but I'll probably just go ahead and, and use some of the epoxy clay that I already opened just because I, I, I don't want to lose that too. But I did get an email the other day from someone who wanted to know uh, how she could keep from losing the details. She had created a really cool, I think she had a Santa Claus, but she really loved the way it looked and she didn't want to lose any of the details on it. The only way you can do that is by making a mold. If you're putting something on top of something else, you're going to be losing some of the details. If you can add them back, like I'm going to do, it doesn't make any difference, but if you really absolutely have to have it perfect, you'd have to use a mold. Just this week, we got a guest post from Sarah Manchester who made some amazing ceiling tiles using plaster molds and paper pulp. And they're really beautiful. She got some amazing detail in them and she tells us exactly how to do it. Uh, obviously, you would need a, uh, a more complicated mold if you're making something three-dimensional that has a lot of undercuts but the process of using the paper pulp in a plaster mold, uh, she really has it down. So um, make sure that you go out to my website at ultimatepapermache.com and click on the blog button right at the very top so that you can see Sarah's paper mache ceiling tiles. So I'm going to leave this now. After I take this off of here, <laughs> and get all the clay cleaned out. It's going to be kind of a mess on the inside. I'll clean that out. And then I'll put it on the mannequin and I'll add the back end. And then I get to figure out how the heck I'm going to make those wings. That's not going to be easy. It has to be clear plastic of some sort, and wires in there somewhere, maybe some hot glue if that doesn't melt my plastic. I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. But this is an experiment, so um, we'll see. Um, like I said, if you actually want a, a, a mask of your own, and you don't want, even if you don't want to make a bug, <laughs> be sure and, and um, get the book rather than following my experiments. It's an awful lot easier, and I actually know this works. <laughs> we never know when I'm trying new stuff. We never really know how it's going to turn out until it does. So um, in the meantime, go check out all my other videos on YouTube, subscribe to my channel, and then come visit me at ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.